Okay, I have a lot of material to cover, and I'm going to be talking very quickly. I apologize. I apologize. Okay, so I am a Muslim Canadian. I was born and raised here in Toronto. Um, and like many of you, I'm born of immigrant parents. And I am a product of the public school system. I was born and raised here, went through the entire public school system from kindergarten all the way through, and I went to University of Alhamdulillah, very proud, uh, also a University of Toronto graduate, mashallah, and I currently work in IT. Having said that, my wife and I have homeschooled, have been homeschooling all of our children from the ground up. Uh, ever since we got married, we discussed this, homeschooling, public school is just never an option. And I'm going to discuss why. The first point I'm going to uh, talk about, about uh, Public education is a topic of colonization and institutionalization. Why am I good enough? Most of our families who came to the West in the first place in the beginning it was not for Islam, but it was for the Western dream, economic success. Education was a big part of that. And naturally, when we came here, one of the ultimate goals was to use the institution that we have to better ourselves. I understand that. I understand that. And especially when you look at the immigrants, where did they come from? They came from countries that were colonized by the Europeans. So by extension, okay, these are the conquerors. We have to come and achieve success through their institutions, through their means, the way they have outlined. And that's why a lot of the immigrant families that do come here are intimidated, believe it or not. Insecure. Am I good enough? Can I do this? Is this possible? They equate education with the institution, and that is not correct. Education is not linked to a building. It is not. It is not. And we have to break that cycle. We have to break that. No, it is possible. It is possible to educate your children without necessarily having a physical structure or having to use those tools or those resources that have been given to you. You can choose other options. When I was in public school in the beginning, and many of you who are as old as I am will understand this, or will know about this, believe it or not, Christianity in public school is being taught. Christianity. Yes. How? In grade one, for God knows how many years we had the Lord's Prayer after uh, the, the uh, anthem, national anthem. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I never went to church. I never went to church. How did I learn the Lord's Prayer? I felt uncomfortable. Well, I felt uncomfortable. I don't know what this is all about. But we were saying this in public school. We were saying the Lord's Prayer in public school. Muslim, Christian, secular, Hindu, whatever. It was part of the ritual. It was only in grade four. I actually had a very fair teacher who recognized her other faiths. She asked if there was any other student who would want to come up and give uh, their own prayer. So I was, mashallah, you know, I was a little outspoken. So I said, sure. And I went and recited from the Fatah in front of my class. This is what I knew. And she was fair enough and honest enough to allow me to share it with everyone. SubhanAllah. But this is in public school. This is public school. Like, we're, like, understand something. We're moving from one extreme to the other. This is where it once was. We were to being taught the Lord's Prayer in public school. What else? Bible stories. In grade one, we were read from the Bible every morning. Stories about Jesus. This is a fact. This is a fact. Also, when the holidays would come around, Christmas carols, we would sing as a class. We would sing in the public uh, school auditorium uh, stories like a Christmas carol. Uh, when you're smaller, a visit from St. Nicholas or, you know, the night before Christmas. Everyone's in the spirit. Everyone's in the spirit. And this is all happening in public school. Not to mention, you learn about Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. We actually remember during Easter time, we'd be given chocolates. So it was exciting. Yay, as a kid, why wouldn't you, right? And of course, school plays, 
concert, you know, musical concerts where they would sing carols and whatnot. This is all being done in public school. I was always exposed to this. Now, we can't just come here and just throw stones at public schools and say, bad, 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 bad. And this is also to see how now to my fellow homeschoolers here. We have to learn to take the good and the bad. We cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. We have to look at what are the positives of public school there are. And I want to emphasize one major point here about any education method, any process, any approach. And I swear, I'm, being, uh, like, I'm saying this honestly after taking a step back and looking at all the options. There is no silver bullet. There is no silver bullet. Every solution has its positives and negatives. There is no solution that does not have its drawbacks. We have to recognize that. So what are the positives of public school? Obviously, socializing. I mean, as a child, I preferred to mix with children my age than my parents. Right? Even today, let's be honest. Kids want to play with kids their age. Not only that, they get, aside from mixing with their own uh, friends of their age, you get to be exposed to different cultures, different people you've not normally been exposed to. And this is a good thing. Well, why it's a good thing? They are, they are taught structure. Order and discipline, raising your hand, lining up, being coming to school on time, you know, not talking out of turn. These are good things. These are good things. You actually have trained teachers, yes. In the public school system, everyone has a degree. That's a reality. That's a good thing. In the mother uh, uh, that I would go on the weekends, it was really just compassionate parents who were just spending a few hours, volunteers, spending some time teaching the children, just a few hours, but they were not trained. Also, they have resources, books, uh, you know, equipment, access to the gym, uh, you know, technology, computers, labs, whatnot. This is all a good thing. Your children have access to it. Of course, field trips and excursions. Which child did not love going to, uh, on a field trip? This is a reality. And that's, a, again, a very good thing. The excitement of being on a school bus, going out, this is very, you know, part of the fun and the joy of being in school. It also teaches the child to be independent. Mom and dad aren't there. They have to deal with the problems on their own. Then they grow up, they go to school. They're dealing in class. They're on their own. This is a good thing. They're not always, they're not always sheltered all the time. They learn to navigate the world gradually on their own. Fine, that's a good thing. <laughs> Report cards, you get a breakdown of their child's progress from an outside source, yes. Parents, every parent will say, my child is a great kid, he's the smartest kid in the world. Every parent will say that. Not always, not true. When you get it from an outside source, they say, look, there's a problem here. Especially when the child is outside the parent's view, outside of the parent's home. Oh, my kid is like this, my kid's like that, okay. Some. And, you know, we have some analytical, some objective uh, uh, thinking here. That's a good thing. Of course, parents have free time and space from their children, you know, especially moms. Well, lie, I understand this. I've seen it. I've seen this. Not only that, it allows parents to work and make extra money. Children learn to be competitive. I recently discovered this. This is a major issue. Yes, they get to play team sports and whatnot in public school, but at an academic level, I realized when you're homeschooling, your child is also not only the smartest kid, but also not the not so smartest kid. They're in a class of one, unless you have twins. Your child, when you're homeschooling, is in a class of one. So by default, they become the smartest child. But if you have several students of the same grade studying together, there's a competitive atmosphere created naturally. And that's what always drove me to excel. That's what drove me always to be number one, to be number one, to be number one. But you can't organically instill that in your child when you're homeschooling. That's a problem for homeschooling. That's a positive in public school. And of course, it's free. It's paid for. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Now, the number one question I have always pushed back on when parents or anyone ask me, why do you homeschool? That's my, this is my question. 
If public education is so good, why don't politicians have their own kids? Well, lie, this is the number, this is the definition of hypocrisy. Where does the prime minister send his children? The president? Where? Premier? I don't know. But I can guarantee it's not the local public school. I can guarantee that. This is Nifa. This is Nifa. This is hypocrisy. Good enough for us, but not for you. Good enough for us, but not for you. This is a problem. This is a problem. And we'll lie, I've been asked this, I've been asked about homeschooling many times, and whenever I ask this same question, we'll lie, yet I never got an answer. I always was received with silence. What we'll lie and say. No one ever challenged me on this. Negatives. Bullying. This is only now coming on, especially because of social media. And just for the record, in case you don't know, girls are actually worse than boys. Girls are actually worse than boys. I'm sorry, sisters. It's true. Swearing, profanity, vulgarity, sexism. Okay? This is real. I learned to swear in public school. And I had a thrill from using those words because I couldn't use them at home. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm talking about myself. So, obviously, racism, Islamophobia from both classmates and teachers. Yes. Yes, it does happen. I remember when I was talking to my class about Ramadan one time, some kids started joking, hey, it's a hunger strike, huh? And God forbid, politics gets involved, you know? Gulf War, whatever, all of a sudden it's in the news, oh, hey, you know? Is this, so we're uh, against you, or what, you know, like, what is this? Why do you hate us? It's there, it comes out, it comes out. And now you're a minority now. Now you have to defend yourself of what other people are doing or what governments are doing outside. Now you're on the defensive. Hazing, initiation. When I started high school, I was a grade nine student, I was afraid of getting egg. Egg. They were throwing eggs at grade nine students who were first starting school. This is real. This was real. Shaming. Slut, everyone's heard of slut shaming? What about virgin shaming? Oh, you don't have a boyfriend? You don't have a girlfriend? What are you gay? Oh my god. Really? Yeah, yeah. You are bully. Bully. You're ashamed. You are insulted if you don't have, if you're not putting Zena. You don't have a girlfriend, you don't have a boyfriend. It's true. It's true. And of course, also you're not economic, meaning, oh, you're not wearing Prada, you're not wearing Air Jordans. Alhamdulillah, like my parents were not, uh, you know, I come, I, I come from a lower middle class family, but I, I, don't, I don't fault my parents at all for buying me, uh, you know, non Air Jordan shoes or non Reeboks or whatever. Like, I don't buy the, uh, like, well, why? It's such a meaningless concept to wear such expensive clothing, especially for children. Well, why? But this is what made them feel special. So this, you know, this is what the reality was. Well, who are you? Like, I mean, it, the irony, the biggest irony of all this, you're going to the same public school as I am. If your parents will lie, we're so rich, why are they sending you to the same school as I am? They live in the same neighborhood as I am. What does that say? It's superficial, but this is where bullying comes in. And bullying, this kind of bullying is also a, 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 a euphemism for racism. Because they may not overtly use racism to bully you, but they'll find another way to bully you. And when I look back, I realize that this was the case. Because I was not the only one from a lower middle class family. There were others. But for some reason, I was single though. You kind of have to have one and one together. And of course, there's also, I mean, when I mentioned about the Islamophobia, there's the very famous now viral recording of that parent, uh, that, sorry, that teacher in the classroom who recorded that went viral was shaming those Muslim students for not supporting or boycotting the <coughs> that LGBT event, whatever. Yeah, teachers are involved too. Teachers are complicit. How? Sometimes they punish the minority students more severely than the, the non-minority. Materialism, again, 
Nikes, Prada, you know, whatever, brands, etc., etc., etc. You know, wasting money on stupidness and whatnot, but you feel left out. Exposure to, of course, cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol. Enough said. I mean, this is something that people will uh, talk about, will aspire to, you know. <coughs> First hand, this is what they see. First hand. You get to know people who sit, smoke, and drink, hummer, and they brag about it. And they brag about it. Un-Islamic and Islamophobic concepts are taught. You forget the year of evolution. History from a Eurocentric perspective. Remembrance Day. Does anyone know what Remembrance Day was really about? It is the defeat of Muslims. The Ottomans lost. They're on the other side, but many of us don't even know. Remembrance Day marks the day the Khilafah, the Ottoman Khilafah was defeated. They were part of the enemies of the Allies. They made a mistake. They should not have participated with the read, but that's history. That's another issue. But the fact is, the Muslim Ummah was involved and they lost and all of the Islamic territories were carved up. That's what Remembrance Day is all about. Do we know what this is? Do we know what this is? No, we don't. We just go with the flow. Of course, there's music, both as a subject and from pop culture. I remember there was the multiple sclerosis readathon that was happening in grade three, when I was in grade three. Um, every participant, the, the, the host or whatever, the guy who sponsored the program uh, host, whatever, was saying everyone who participates will get a free Michael Jackson poster. Everyone in the auditorium went crazy. I had no idea who it was. I didn't know. Well, I didn't know. I was shocked. Like, I, I heard you listen. But this is how you get exposed to these criminals. And there are criminals. Well, lie, they are. Through and through. But this is where the exposure begins. If it's not in uh, social media, and, the Bible, and there was no social media at the time. So this is where that exposure came. Now we have social media to thank for this exposure. And of course, movies. You hear about the, you know, your friends going to certain movies. And whatnot. I'm not saying don't watch movies. That's your choice, whatever. But the reality is, is that, of course, there's a lot of fahisha, a lot of filth. A lot of you know inappropriate content in a lot of movies that are you know not even just R-rated. But I remember people coming to the what do you call it school after they seeing certain movies that they they were allowed to go or they're old enough to go and talking about the inappropriate content that they had, and then you're being introduced to it. Oh yeah, she's like this. It's there, and your child is exposed to it. Your child is exposed to it. I was exposed to it. Also, religious accommodation. It's difficult to implement Salah in public school. You have to keep track of your time. You have to remember to go for Jummah. And who's going to get put by? You go to the masjid, etc. This is very difficult. And sometimes, you know, parents were not, no, not that religious. Ah, eh, you know, it's okay. Leave it after. Eh, just my it's okay. No big deal. You know? School is the priority, remember? School is the priority. Don't miss class. We'll make it quick. Just, 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 quick, quick. There's five minutes, no problem, let's go quicker. You don't want to miss class. You see? Salah is an inconvenience now. Salah is an inconvenience. And this is coming from parents. Why? No, I don't want to miss class. It's true. It's true. Like, parents just don't, didn't, either don't know or they don't care. That's the reality. And of course, all options are not available in the cafeteria or whatnot. The quality of education is subpar compared to other alternatives like private school and homeschooling. I mean, why is there, you know, uh, St. Michael's College? Why is there uh, Upper uh, Upper Canada College? Why is there so many preparatory schools that the elite families send their children to? Why? Why? If public school was so good, then all the rich families would also be sending their kids there. But there's a reason why. Smaller class sizes, more highly trained teachers, better facilities, networking, uh, and, 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 and of course, higher quality curricula like IV, international baccalaureate, advanced placement. These are realities. And now my number one topic I want to talk about very quickly, heterosexuality. And this is why I get very angry with parents. Well, a lot I get very angry with parents. I mean this. 
because they're getting angry now. Now we're having assemblies like this. Brothers and sisters, we should have been having these conferences years ago. I tell everyone, forget homosexuality. I had a problem with the public school system teaching heterosexuality. I had a problem with the schools teaching heterosexuality. Understand that. Remixing, dress code, girls are wearing shorts, boys are wearing shorts, mini skirts, leaving very little to the imagination. Boyfriends, girlfriends, dating, school dances. This starts in middle school, by the way. Grade six, starting in grade six, school dances. Do you know where your child is? Maybe he's dancing with another girl. Do you know where your daughter is? Maybe she's dancing with another boy. You're okay with that? Are you okay with that? Apparently our parents were. Apparently they were. Because nothing was being done at the time. Only now. Exposure to pornography and pinup girls or guys. Look, you go to any high school, you go to the lockers, what do the guys have in their lockers? What do the girls have in their lockers? I didn't have any of this, but the people next to me did. So you can't miss it. And in the change rooms and whatnot, or sometimes in the classroom, you have scumbags, dirty, filthy boys or girls. Actually, I remember one time a girl brought pornography into the classroom. They did, and they do. This is how it happens. I'm not bringing it, but I'm not being exposed to it because of someone else. As a parent, what do you do? Are you in control? No, you're not. Co-ed gym class. Gym classes are co-ed up until middle school. And sometimes the classes are happening simultaneously. You can't miss it. Change room for the boys and girls. You know what goes on in the change room for boys and girls? They're changing openly in front of everyone. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Where's the haya? Haya, where is it? You're seeing other uh, private parts of other people. Your gender. Is that okay? I was very uncomfortable about this. Very uncomfortable about this. I was embarrassed. I didn't, like, sometimes I would, you know, there are no private stalls, so I'd wrap a towel around myself, or I'd cover it somehow so people couldn't see me when I would change. But and people would make fun of you or whatnot. Yeah, hey, look at you, da, 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 you know what? This is, and some people, you know, they're so shameless, they dance in front of the other, uh, other kids and everyone would laugh, ah, uh, look at this. This is the, what, what is going on? Or, what they would do is casually walk to the showers back and forth, showing their privates, no big deal, hey, we're all guys, we're all grown adults. After school parties, this also happens. Hey, I'm having a party, guys, there'll be a DJ, whatever, you wanna come over? We're having a party, there'll be, you know, blah, 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 blah. Boys, girls, pre-mixing again, but it's outside of school at someone else's home, so there is even fewer rules. And the prom. The prom. This is what all kids look forward to. Alhamdulillah, my school was so pathetic as a high school, they didn't even have a prom for the kuffar. So I didn't even have a, alhamdulillah, the option to avoid it. No one had it, alhamdulillah. Sexual assault. Brothers and sisters, do you know this happens to our sisters? This happens. This happens. Muslim girls are targeted in particular. You know why? Because they're forbidden fruit. They're wearing hijab. They're guarded. They're guarded. Yeah, one chef openly said in the, in the halakha one time in the masjid, you know, especially from cult other cultures where there is Muslim minority, where Muslims are minorities, those cultures in particular want to get at our Muslim sisters. Because they can't get them over there, they want to get it over here. It's the forbidden fruit for them. It's disgusting, but this is real. LGBTQ+, now you care, but I'm an optimist. It's not too little, and it's not too late. Brothers and sisters, look. I come from a culture that obsesses over halal meat. And when immigrant Muslims came to the West, obviously there were no halal meat options. So what did we do? We, sat, we had our own people become butchers to slaughter them, to have butcher shops, to open our own restaurants, to service the community's needs, or halal meat. To the point, and I feel this is a bit of an extreme, where you have brother, you have, unfortunately, people 
who will not even pray or wear hijab if they don't eat haram. They insist on eating halal meat. I'm not trying to attack the concept of halal meat, but there's a balance we have to have. And if we Muslims made the same emphasis, had the same priority on Islamic education and the tabia of our children, then guess what? We would have as halal meat, just as much as halal meat, then wallahi, we would have the best schools in this country. We would absolutely have the best schools in this country. Honestly, public school should not be the default. It should be the last resort. The last resort. Now, as Mr. Lees correctly pointed out, what if public school is the only option? Yes, the single mom who has three children. What if the, my parents could not homeschool even if they wanted to? They didn't know the first thing about it. What do you do? What do you do? And we have to be realistic. We have to be realistic. Okay? They can't afford private school. They can't afford Islamic school. You don't know how to homeschool. Number one, please, please, I all whole lie saying this, please. Have a strong and loving relationship with your child or children from the beginning, please. You do not want a disconnect. I had a, I lived a double life. I was a certain way at home and a certain way at school. They didn't know who I was. I was different. Not, not that I was a drug addict or a, some kind of a crook gang leader in public school, but I was a different person. I was living different lives. You want openness from your children. You need that transparency. And that can only happen with love. Also, please never embarrass your child. Never. Never embarrass your child, okay? These are things that will scar your child and create that disconnect. Please, support your child from the beginning. Please, love. Make your home a safe place. Not all public schools are the same. Say, if you have to send your child to a public school, send them to a school that has a stronger Muslim presence. Some schools have larger Muslim populations than others. If you're going to have to, try that. Or at least a better, safer environment. Do the best you can, please. Also, every day, if they're going to public school, every day, detox your children after they come home. Have a conversation at meal times, at the dinner table. Son, daughter, what happened? What did they teach you? What did they do? Discuss it. Talk about it. Please have that loving, open communication. Lead by example at home, brothers. And I'm talking to the men now. You must be the imam of your home, the amir of your home. Get up the fajr, lead salah. Lead by example. Apply the same rules for yourself as you have for your children. Change the channel. Do, you know, like, wallahi, practice what you preach. If it's inappropriate to watch on TV for the children, it's also inappropriate for you, guaranteed. Please. Live by example. Live by example. Be the Amir. Practice what you preach. It starts with the men. It starts with the men. Be the Amir. You want respect? Earn it. Live it. Practice it. Engage in plenty of Islamic extracurricular activities to counterbalance public school. Yes, alhamdulillah. We have such a huge Muslim community now. You're going to have to spend some money on gas. You're going to have to spend some money on Islamic activities like sports or whatever, public, you know, like, like crafts, uh, brothers, sisters, whatever. You're going to have to spend some money. You're going to have to do some driving. But it's worth it. It is worth it. You have to. Supplement Islamic education as part of the child's ongoing curricula. You have to start. It starts with the Quran memorization. Teach your children Arabic. Teach your children Arabic. They're teaching French in school. How about Arabic? Provide halal alternatives to those being uh, offered in the public school. You're not going to send your kid to the prom. How about you make a class, uh, family trip to go somewhere else? Maybe to Montreal, maybe to Ottawa. I don't know. But give them halal alternatives. Give them halal alternatives. Celebrate, eat hard. Work hard, play hard, pray hardest. Work hard, play hard, pray hardest. Okay? It's nowhere, nowhere in Islam. Does it say you have to be miserable? Nowhere does it say in Islam you have to be sad. Nowhere does it say in Islam you cannot have fun or enjoy. You can do all of those things just in the halal. Be generous to your children. Give them gifts. Show them that you care. Show them that you care. Be merciful. Be merciful. Do 
not allow your child to feel left out because of their Islam. Oh, I'm missing out on this, huh? Oh, they got there. We celebrate Christmas. What do we do? We do Eid. All we do on Eid is just go to the masjid, come home. That's it. Don't make them feel left out. Don't make them feel left out. Make them give them izza, give them pride for being Muslim. Yes, we celebrate Eid. What do you celebrate? What is that? Halloween, Christmas. What is that? Give them that sense of pride. That means investing in your Eid. That's it. Please. This is my contact information. I'm not going to be able to stay very long. That's my email, my personal email. That's my phone number, WhatsApp, SMS, whatever. Okay? If you want to engage me, discuss with me, you want to debate, I don't like to debate, I am willing to discuss. I am available, I am happy to share and elaborate further. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.